Alright, welcome back guys. So you've got a fried receiver. Or at least you think it's fried, but chances are the entire receiver isn't fried, it's just the voltage regulator. I will go ahead and say that this is the unofficial fix. Um, it does work, it works just as well as the proper fix. I will do a separate video on how to properly repair these, but to do that it requires a hot air gun and most people don't have one of those. It also requires you buying a new voltage regulator, where this way you don't have to buy anything. So, uh, I actually have a fried one right here. These two are still good, but I'm going to use them for demonstration. Um, this is the XSR, we've got a X4RSB and D4R2. This also applies to pretty much every other FreeSky receiver. Well, hell, it probably applies to receivers of other brands. I don't know. I, I don't. FreeSky is all I use. So, you know when you plug in power and it's getting the 5 volts from the flight controller, it's not getting power. The lights, the LEDs aren't lighting up, you're getting nothing. Like I said, that's because the voltage regulator is fried. Just real quick, to help you locate the voltage regulator, on the XSR, it's located right here. On the X4RSB, it is located right here. And on the D4R2, it is right here. Just to give you a quick little pinout idea, uh, it's, it has three pins on the front, one pin on the back. The back pin and the middle pin are actually the same pin. Uh, that middle pin actually runs underneath the voltage regulator, and it's the same thing as the back one. On, if we consider this the right side, this pin on the right side is the voltage in, which is going to be 5 volts because it comes from your flight controller. Then on this side, this is the uh, basically voltage out. This is a 3.3 volt voltage regulator, so 5 volts will come in through this pin and come out as 3.3 volts through this pin. And because we know this, we can actually power the receiver without this uh, voltage regulator at all. Just to prove it, on this XSR, I've gone ahead and already removed it. Now real quick, let's talk about where we get the 3.3 volts. Every flight controller, as far as I know, has some sort of 3.3 volt power source. On the Seriously Dodo, you have one located right here. It's even labeled 3V3. On the X-Racer F303, it's this tiny little pad right here, also labeled 3.3. On the SP Racing Mini, you have a 3.3 right here, also labeled, and even on the NACE32, you have one right here where I already have these wires soldered on, and you can locate it from the back side, it says 3.3. I could keep going on and on, uh, I got a ton of these fly controllers, but you get the idea. Not only that, even if your fly controller does not have a dedicated 3.3 volt pad, any fly controller that has these three little pins for the Spectrum satellite receivers, it's guaranteed to have 3.3. So if you look at from this side, from like the edge of the board, this left pin is always 3.3. Just like on the Dodo fly controller. Once again, this left pin is 3.3 volts. And any other fly controller that has the Spectrum satellite receiver port, even the NACE32 has it. Okay, so we've identified where we get our power source from. Now let's talk about where it goes. I'll be using the NACE32 just for this example. Um, I've got the ground wire on the ground pin and another wire on the 3.3 volt power source. Uh, you can do it here or if you have a Spectrum satellite receiver port, the middle pin is always ground so you can put a wire, or your ground wire on that middle pin and then like I said the left pin is 3.3 so you can just place ground and power right there. Now let's talk about how to put it on the receiver. You may have noticed on the XSR and X4RSB, these tiny little pins on the side. This pin all the way to the left side is going to be your ground pin. The pin all the way to the right is your power pin. The power pin is actually run to, like I said, the 3.3 volt out on the voltage regulator. It's, it's run in the same circuit. On the X4RSB, let me hold it this way for you. 
Once again, left side is ground, right side is power. And this power pin is run to the left side of this voltage regulator, which is the voltage out. The other thing that is tied into that 3.3 volt circuit is not just the voltage regulator out and the power pin, but both of these are actually tied into the uh, CPU 2102 processor. So it's going to be on this pin here and also this pin here. The processor actually has two uh, power inputs. But really, you don't need to know that. That was just extra information. On the D4R2, you do not have those four little pins on the side. So what you guys will have to do is actually solder your wire directly to the 3.3 volt out on the voltage regulator pad. So you would solder your wire directly to this leg. I know it's really small, but um, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Or your other option is remove it but I highly suggest you do not remove this unless you have a hot air gun because if you try to do it with a soldering iron you will damage the pads and the circuits and it's n then it's trash for real this time. So I'm going to demonstrate on this XSR that I have already removed the voltage regulator from just to show you that this does work even without a regulator whatsoever. Okay, I soldered my wires on. Uh, use the blue wire for power, black wire for ground, ground on the left side, power on the right side. I want to plug in my USB cable. The flight controller is going to provide it with the 3.3 volts that it needs. Oh, and there we go. We are getting power. Now let's see if it actually works. Hey JC, welcome back. Cheat mode active. Yeah, we're getting solid green light. Now, the next thing you need to know is however you were powering your uh, receiver before, no matter which receiver, you want to remove that power wire. You don't want two power wires running from it. So, for example, on my XSR, I have depinned the, I depinned the power and ground. Really, you don't even have to solder this ground wire on. You can leave the ground wire going to, you know, whatever, but it doesn't matter. Uh, as long as you have a ground going to either one. That's all that matters. So I will plug this in. And that applies for both of these too. You can keep the ground going to the pins. Just make sure you take the power wire off. Okay, now if we go into beta flight, I'm just going to test it to make sure. So we will go to receiver. I can move all my joysticks around. We're good there. Test some switches. Things are about to get real. Hybrid mode. Stunt mode active. Cheat mode active. And everything is working. Hybrid mode. Now let's test telemetry. And all my telemetry is working. Just to give you D4R2 guys some hope. I've already just soldered the ground wire on. And like I said, you guys want to solder your wire to the left leg on this voltage regulator. And boom, it works. So that's going to be it, guys. Uh, like I said, that's the unofficial fix. I'm sure somebody's going to give me some hell for it, but hey, it works. I'll leave some links to my playlist in the top right of your screen and description below, so check those out for other helpful videos, and I will see you again soon.